What's up guys, my name's Brandon and today Apple released iOS 17.2 beta 1 just one day after the release of iOS 17.1. Now along with this release, we also got the first beta for iPadOS 17.2, watchOS 10.2, macOS Sonoma 14.2, tvOS 17.2, and HomePod version 17.2. But as usual in this video, we are focusing on iOS 17.2 beta 1. And you can see the size came in at around six 6.39 gigabytes on my iPhone 15 Pro Max. That's because I was coming from the 17.1 final release. Anytime you go from a beta to a final or vice versa, you are going to see a large size like that. So let's go ahead and check out the new build number. And our new build number here for 17.2 beta 1 is 21C5029G. So we do have a G at the end of the build number, which indicates we still have quite a few betas to go before final, which we will talk about near the end of this video. And if we go down, we do also have a modem firmware update. So that is now 1.22. 0.01. All right, so now what's new here in iOS 17.2 beta one? And the first thing is a brand new application called Journal. So the Journal application is now officially here with iOS 17.2. And when you first load it up, you will see this image right here. It's kind of like the splash screen for Journal. And it says, write about your experiences and find meaningful insights. Let journaling suggestions and writing prompts help you get started. And then once you go in there, you will see you have to opt in to journaling suggestions suggestions and it says iPhone uses on device intelligence to create journaling suggestions based on your everyday moments. So basically if you turn journaling suggestions on, it will use data from photos, your music that you've listened to, workouts and more to offer you suggestions and kind of just topics to write about in the journal app. And if we go into the journal app, you can see it just says start journaling. And if we tap on the plus right here, we do have some recommended options right here. So it says that we listened to podcasts 13 hours ago. It shows who I've connected to recently, the music I've listened to. And you also have recent right here. If you only want to go by your recent you know, things that you've done, like on Thursday, for example, I listen to podcasts. On Wednesday, I listen to this podcast. You can kind of use those. So you can see there's a little button down there in the bottom right hand corner. So if I want to write about what I was feeling about those podcasts, for example, you can see it shows listen to podcasts. And we have all these different ones that it shows. And you can start writing. So I'll just write in I learned a lot from this podcast episode and tap on done. And now you can see right here in journal, we have, you know, that little entry right there. And it also shows the podcast that I listened to that led to that journal entry. So let's do another one where it's not based on a recommendation. So let's just do a regular entry. So I just wrote a little journal entry, like something that I would actually write on a daily basis right here for Thursday, October 26th. So let's go ahead and tap on these three dots. You can see you can add a custom date as well. So if you want to go back and, you know, write something for a previous day, you can do that right there. We also have the bookmarks up in the top left, but for now we're just going to tap on done and you can see the journal entry shows up right here. Now you'll notice that we do have this little option here that says lock your journal. So you can lock this application with face ID. So if I go to set up now, you can see you can require password after one minute, through 15 minutes or just immediately. So if I set this to immediately, we'll turn that on. We'll do face ID, we'll scan, and now we'll go out of the app and then back into it. And you can see it does say use face ID to unlock journal. And now we have our entries right here and you can also filter these if you use suggestions for some of them. And let's see what happens when we bookmark. So if you bookmark it, it just shows right there. And I'd imagine that you can, yes, you can also filter by bookmarked as well. So if you have really important journal entries that you want to always keep track of, you can bookmark those and filter this to only show bookmarked. So pretty cool. I think the journal application is going to be huge for a lot of people. I know I need to get back into journaling. I feel like the older I get, the more I want to actually journal. Now, if you go into your settings, we do have some settings in here as well. So down here we have the journal section and we have a journaling suggestions right there. And right here we have for the new entry, you can skip the journaling suggestions. So if you do not want those suggestions showing up, you can skip those right there. You have the ability to lock journal. You have a schedule as well. So you can get notified to write on a specific day and and time. So if you turn that schedule on, here's what that interface looks like. And then we do also have a save to photos option where it says save photos and videos taken in the journal app to the photos application. So you can choose to have that on or off. It is off by default. And then I did also notice a new section for settings as well. If we go to privacy and security, you can see down here, we do have journaling suggestions. So in here is where you can go to turn off any of these journaling suggestions that you may not want to be in there anymore. And you can see significant locations is also an option 
if you want to have that on or off, and you also have discoverable by others and preferred suggestions with others. This update also finally brings contact key verification. So Apple first previewed this feature. They first talked about this in December of last year in 2022. So now it is finally here with 17.2 and you can see it's under the Apple ID section and settings, or you can just search for contact key verification and it says verification and iMessage. Now, if you go ahead and turn that on, you will see the splash screen right here that tells you more about this. It says contact key verification allows you to manually verify who you are messaging with by comparing contact verification codes in person or over the phone. Conversations with people who have a contact key verification turned on also receive automatic advanced protections to help prevent even very sophisticated attackers from impersonating anyone in a conversation. So if you're doing like a big business deal or, you know, if you're just, you know, sharing kind of really personal or information that just should not be seen by the public, this could be a good idea to have this turned on and have those codes, you know, talked about in person or over the phone. So most of you guys are never going to use this feature, but it is pretty cool that this has been added into iOS now. This update also brings one of the best animations I've ever seen to iOS, and that is actually with the translate option in the action button setting. So now on the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max, you have the option to use the action button to invoke translate, and it says translate phrases or have a conversation with someone in another language. So here's the animation. I'm gonna go ahead and press on that and take a look up top. Look how sick that is, but that's not even the best part. So let me stop and let it translate. Schauen Sie nach oben, wie krank das ist. Aber das ist nicht einmal der beste Teil. Lassen Sie mich aufhören. <laughs> how sick is that? So not even just the first part where it's listening to me, but also how it kind of goes over each letter like that. Like the animations are just on another level. I think it is so sick and I'm, I'm never, probably never going to use this as the action button, you know, setting, but that is still so cool. This update also brings some changes to the Apple Music application. So we just got a lot of changes in 17.1, but 17.2 continues that because if you go into one of your playlists, you can see that first off, I have 17.1 over here on the left. Let me up my brightness a little bit and 17.2 on the right. So first off, you can see that we have our profile picture right to the left of our name right there. And then also up in the top right, we have that little plus icon where we can add a friend to join the playlists. So collaborative playlists are finally now available with iOS 17.2. This is something that Apple showed at the Worldwide Developers Conference and said it would come later. And now it's finally in 17.2. So basically, this is going to allow anybody that you invite with a link to edit and reorder the songs in a specific playlist. And you can have this turned on where you need to approve collaborators as well if you're inviting multiple people. So if we go ahead and start collaboration. You can see that you will have to duplicate the playlist to share with others. So I'm just going to duplicate this house party playlist. So it does take a minute to duplicate everything. And let's see how this works when we go into here. So okay, so now it gives us some suggestions of who we want to add first off. And then right here, you can kind of see the person's profile picture to the right of the album artwork and it shows kind of who added that song so that's pretty cool and if you tap on the people glyph up in the top right so you can see that we have this new section right here so you have a qr code or you can just share via a link and from here you can see everybody who is in this collaborative playlist and take a look at my username on Apple Music, by the way, I'm still pretty proud of that one. And then you'll also notice in the playlist section that we have a new favorite songs playlist. And this is auto generated based on the songs that you favorite. So now every song you favorite will be put into its own playlist. And speaking of Apple Music, we also have a new focus filter that has something to do with the music application. So if you go into focus, go into one of your focus modes, and then go down to focus filters, which is one of my most underrated features in iOS, by the way, we have a new one here for music that says set use listening history. And if you tap on that, it says choose if music played will influence recommendations and mixes appear in recently played or be shown to others in Apple Music. So you can turn that on or off as a focus filter when you're in a certain focus mode. We also have some new widgets in iOS 17.2. So you can see this is the new clock digital widget. So that looks pretty cool. It kind of reminds me of the Apple Watch Ultra watch face, but that is how it looks here on the home screen. I actually like this one quite a bit. It's easy to tell the time from a distance. And then we also have new weather widgets. So if we go into here, we have three new ones. So we have details, which says see the chance of precipitation, UV index, wind and more. And that's what it looks like. We have daily forecast, which shows the weather conditions for a specific location for the next few days. And then we also have sunrise and sunsets. And that's just a quick and easy way to see the sunrise and sunsets 
for your location. So I'll just add the sunrise and sunset and you can take a look at two of those new widgets right there. I think they look pretty good. There's also a new color option for the contact posters. When you go to edit your name up there, we now have a rainbow option. In the books application, if you go into one of your books and then go into the themes and settings and then go to the page turn animation option, we have a brand new option here for fast fade. So that's a new animation. So I'll show you what that looks like. So if we go to the next page, you can see it's a very smooth and it does exactly what it says, a very smooth fade animation into the next page. That's probably going to be my new default personally. And then of course, I do have to mention that the notification bug is still present here in 17.2 beta one. As you can see right there, we still have that crazy chop, that crazy lag here in the notification center. Now, as far as the performance goes so far, it feels pretty much the same as 17.1. It's really hard to tell a difference in just a couple of hours, but I am going to run a Geekbench 6 test here and see how it scores compared to 17.1 at the final release. So we scored a 20 86 on the single core and a 7145 on the multi core. So you could see how that compares to the previous build, which is 17.1. And we got a lower score on both single core and multi core, which is kind of expected for a first beta compared to a final release. And then as far as battery life goes, it seems like my battery is dropping a little bit more than it usually does. You guys will have to tell me what I was at at the beginning of this video and see if it has been dropping or if it's just me imagining things. But it seems like battery life might be a little bit worse here on the first beta compared to 17.1 but again that's not going to be much of a surprise when you're going to a beta from a final release especially a beta one and then finally let's talk about what to expect next from Apple because next up is going to be iOS 17.2 beta 2 and I would expect that to come on the week of November 6th so usually Apple skips a week on these 0.2 betas after beta one so I would not expect to see the second beta for 17.2 until the week of the sixth most likely right there on November 7th and of course next week we will be seeing the Apple event on October 30th that is a Mac focused event I will be live streaming my reaction to that here on the channel and we should see the new Macs launch that same week that we'll see 17.2 beta 2 the week of the 6th there but we'll have to wait and see on that so anyways guys that is iOS 17.2 beta 1 I hope you enjoyed this video as always if you did I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up also make sure to subscribe for more iOS 17 and 17.2 to coverage. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.